Hey guys, welcome back. Jerry once again here at Hilltop Firearms Training Center in Dover, Tennessee. Thanks for watching. A few years ago, a very innovative handgun made its debut. Imported from Turkey by Century Arms, the Canik 55 TP9 series pistol caught the attention of a lot of shooters. It was durable, reliable, very accurate, and it sold at a very competitive price point hundreds of dollars cheaper than some of its competitors. The pistol really caught on. It was a very unique design. Some said it was very similar to the Walther P99. And I agree, it did, it did share some similarities, but it also had a lot of things going for it and that were very unique to the pistol itself. Now, the TP9 was a striker-fired pistol that utilized a very rare thing, a single and double action trigger. Along the way, some folks felt like the ergonomics of the pistol could be refined just a little bit. And they also said, you know, that first, that first initial trigger press is a little long. Hence, as a result, to make the, the pistol just a little bit better, Canik replied by coming out with the TP9 SA series. SA stood for single action. Very unique in its design. You had a very crisp single action trigger with a reset that was extremely smooth. One of the best, best triggers I have ever fired from a striker fire pistol. A lot of gun riders would agree on this. This pistol really caught the attention of a lot of folks. But there was one thing in its design that sort of turned some people off or made them reluctant to buy this pistol. Once again, striker fired. As you can see back here, you can tell that the striker is in the cocked position. Along the top of the slide, you'll notice an ambidextrous decock lever that renders the pistol inoperable. So when you decock the pistol, you press the button, and now the striker is no longer in the cock position. So even on a live round, the trigger is essentially dead. This was something that kind of concerned some folks. The reason being was they felt, what if they were carrying this pistol for defensive purposes, somehow, some way along the way, this button was inadvertently depressed while they were carrying the pistol. They need to use the gun, they come up out of the holster and dead trigger. Now, I will say this, guys. While many people argued that that was a design flaw, I felt like it's just about impossible to actually depress this and decock the pistol during normal carrying of the pistol. In fact, in some of our advanced classes, we've kind of put this pistol through the paces, uh, doing some shooting from the supine position, where basically we place the shooters on their back. Uh, they're rolling around, ground fighting type drills. Not once were we able to replicate this decock lever being depressed and rendering the pistol with a dead trigger. A lot of gun riders felt like that was really a very odd feature to put on such a pistol. And I do agree, because really, why would you need that? One of the things, though, was you would not have to rechamber the pistol to get it back in fighting order. You would simply treat it like almost like doing a press check. Basically pull it back slightly, and we're back in business. Now, I agree, when things go wrong, Murphy's Law kicks in, the last thing you need is a dead trigger. So, a lot of folks were saying, you know, it's a great handgun, but I don't like this. So, as a result, Canik replied, once again, listen to the consumer, and now, the new TP9 SF is devoid of the decock lever. We're gonna do some shooting today. We're gonna do a tabletop review. Stick around, guys.
Alright guys, let's do a quick tabletop of what is included with the Canik TP9SF. Go ahead and get the pistol out. Good quality hard plastic case with this closed foam cell padding. Everything fits real nice and neat, keeps everything where you need it. Um, they do supply you with a right-handed very reminiscent of Blackhawk Serpa. Now, I'm not a fan of the Blackhawk Serpa, or this holster for that matter. I don't like this type of a design, but good lord, they give you a holster to get you started. So, I mean, really, I can't complain about the holster itself. They're giving you something to get you out on the range and something to put your handgun in. Um, I will say that it is well constructed. Real, real rigid uh, polymer type holster. Now, here's what they've done different. And I did think this was cool. With the other Canic pistols, they gave you two different uh, attachments, a belt attachment and a paddle attachment, two separate devices. This time, they've combined both into one modular unit. You can run a belt through here or simply use the paddle. A lot of people like the paddle design. You take this little screw out. You set the cant to what you want it to be. If you like a little bit, say like a slight forward cant, put it on there, tighten down the screw, you're good to go. Well thought out. Of course they give you the <laughs> always popular loading magazine loading tool. I've never used these, but these actually do come in handy with some folks. A well illustrated owner operator manual. You get a cleaning rod and the bore brush, they do give you that. Now, just like the other Canic pistols, they give you the a standard and then a large arched back strap for those might who, who, who just want to change the grip angle, say if you have really big hands, this is invaluable. Um, the other thing that I found cool was they, they give you the little tool that allows you to replace it. It's just basically a hard punch, but the hard punch how it works is pop the roll pin out, take your back strap out, put the other one in, put the pin back in, you're good to go. And of course, in states where it is legal, you are supplied with two high quality Mechgar magazines that hold 18 rounds. They also have available, which I've seen, it's an extended base plate that gives you 20 rounds of ammo. That's a lot of firepower in a handgun, 20 plus one in the chamber. All right, what we're going to do now is do a side-by-side -side comparison of the Canik TP9SF and compare it to the TP9SA. All right, guys, let's do a real quick comparison side-by-side -side of both pistols. You're going to notice, first of all, they are, in fact, unloaded. We're going to go ahead and drop the magazines out of both of them. One thing I want to show you, first thing that really stood, stood out to me as soon as I took it out of the box, this is the original TP9SA magazine, made by Mechar, extremely durable, high quality magazines. They make some of the best magazines in the world. But you will notice a very highly reflective blued finish, a very nice blued finish, but look at the new magazine. Non-reflective, sort of a satin finish. This is what they're calling their anti-friction coating. Very popular. Uh, the US military uses the same basic coating on the Beretta M9 mags. Uh, great for sandy environments. So that was one thing that I noticed immediately. I was like, hey, they changed the mags. They also added, which is kind of cool, they added the Canic logo to the base plate, which is no big deal, but I just noticed that and thought that was kind of cool. Now, when you look at the frames, the lower portion of each pistol appears to be identical. It does not, from what I gather, doesn't look like they changed anything. But, let's take a look at the slides. First thing that comes to mind, because of the decock lever, you're going to notice a shorter sight radius. The distance between here and here, look at the new sight. Much more aggressive sight. Gives you a just about the same kind of a sight picture. But this sight here, to me, seems to be more robust, a lot more uh, quicker target acquisition. Now, I'm not a huge fan of sort of the low snag design. I never have been. Reason being, if I had to do a one-handed malfunction drill where the gun needed to be cleared and I only had one hand free, I like to have a ledge where I can catch it on a belt, piece of gear, whatever. But because 
the pistol is equipped with industry standard dovetails, that's going to be a breeze to find some aftermarket sights, which I plan to put on here. The original Canik, once again, it did have good sights, but the front, if you will notice, very reminiscent of the CZ, where they machined the dovetail from the front in. So this is almost like it's staked on. Not the easiest sight to replace or upgrade. I actually dropped some paint in there so I could see it better. <laughs> but um, cosmetically, notice the original slide on the TP9SA. A lot of extra additional machining. Now they did this here to basically sort of cut down on the glare. But there is a lot of extra angles and cuts. If you'll notice also on the back, you also basically have this rounded area <clears throat> where on the new, you simply have a clean slant cut. Very clean along the top. Nothing machined. A lot less machining goes on with this. The one thing that I do like is both pistols still have, which I think is a great thing, is the loaded chamber indicator in the dark you can feel if there's a round in there so if you don't if it's in low light you tactile you can feel if you have a round in the chamber basically um, they it's just once again another great improvement so I just wanted to kind of show you that from side by side comparison um, let's get back out on the range do some more shooting Alright guys, that wraps it up for today with the Canik TP9SF. If, the, uh, if anything was holding you back from making the purchase, uh, some of the things we discussed with the TP9SA, namely the, the top slide mounted decock lever, if that was the reason that was holding you back, then the SF is the way to go. There's no reason not to get one of these handguns. I would highly encourage you to go to your local gun store. If they have one of these, ask to see it. You will be surprised at the quality you're getting. Uh, not to mention, I mentioned it before, but hundreds of dollars less than any of the competitors out there with the same amount of quality, if not more. As always, guys, I thank you for watching. Uh, I'm going to post a link to Century Arms website. Check out what they've got out there to offer. If you are in the market for a highly durable, very reliable handgun, the, the Canik TP9 SF is the way to go. Guys, as always, we thank you for watching. We will see you soon on the range.